In this problem, we're told an automobile engine slows down from 3500 RPM to 1200 RPM in 2.5 seconds. Calculate A, its angular acceleration, assumed constant, and B, the total number of revolutions the engine makes in this time. So let's go ahead and write down what we're given first. So given, so what are we told? So we know the time it's going to take to slow down is 2.5 seconds. So we can write that T equals 2.5 seconds. So this is going to be our time interval, right, from the beginning to the end. And we know it's going to slow down from 3,500 RPM to 1,200 RPM. So what this is, uh, RPM is essentially telling us, right, it's going to be angular velocity. So this is going to be initial angular velocity and final. So they tell us we're going to start at 3,500 RPM, right, and then we're going to end at 1,200 RPM. So these are going to be our two values. And so essentially, this is what we need to solve this problem. So let's go ahead and start with A. So what is A? A is going to be its angular acceleration. So this is going to be alpha. So you need to know that alpha is equal to the change in omega over the change in time. So the change in its angular velocity over the change in time. We know what the change in time is. It's 2.5 seconds, right? But what's its change in um, the change in uh, its angular velocity? Right, we know it's initial and we know it's final, so it's just going to be final. You can call it final or just w or uh, omega minus omega initial. So essentially, it's going to be equal to final, which is twelve hundred minus thirty five hundred. Right, all I did was plug in, and so over two point five. But keep in mind when we solve this, uh, we want it to be in radians per second. And this is in uh, revolutions per minute. So we have to uh, manipulate this a bit. So keep in mind this is seconds. This is revolutions per minute. And so we want to get, or yeah, revolutions per minute. If we want to get rid of the minute, right, because we just want to have it on top be radians per second, not RPM. Let me actually just rewrite this up top. So keep in mind this is seconds still. Uh, I'm just going to solve this part. So 1,200 minus 3,500 is minus 2,300, right? And then this is RPM, so revolutions per minute. And so if we want to get it into uh, radians per second, uh, we know that one revolution, or let's start with the minutes. So there's going to be one minute for every 60 seconds, right? So keep in mind we're just manipulating the units so we can get it in the correct units because we need seconds. And then we need top to be radians per second. So if we multiply by 1 over 60, that's getting rid of the minutes. And then we know 1 revolution is equal to 2 pi radians. You need to know that. So 2 pi radians, all we got to do is multiply by 2 pi. Or, yeah, multiply by 2 pi, and that's going to get rid of uh, revolutions and make it in radians. So 2 pi radians over 1 rev. So notice how that cancels that. And we're just going to have... Uh, radians over seconds. So go ahead and do this, right? So do 2300 or minus 2300. So minus 2300 divided by 60 and then multiply it by 2 pi. So yeah, so go ahead and do this. You should get minus 240. 0.855 so this is radians per second so all we did was uh, we were going to write it up here but we just changed it so this is going to be the change in our angular velocity so minus 240.855 radians per second over 2.5 seconds all we're doing is following this formula. We just solved for change in angular velocity over the change in time. If you go ahead and do this, minus 240.8555 or 855 divided by 2.5, you're going to get minus 96.34. And then keep in mind the units. Radians per second divided by seconds is radians per second squared. I'm going to go ahead and round just to minus 96. So minus 96 radians per second squared. So that's going to be that, right? So this is your answer to A. This is going to be the acceleration, right? So your angular acceleration. So this is your answer to A. Let's go ahead and do B now. 
I'm going to go ahead and erase the screen. So if you need any of this, write it down. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to erase the screen so we can do B. So there we go. So let's go ahead and do B. So B is asking us for the total number of revolutions. And so in order to solve this, there's a formula you need to know to solve for the number of revolutions, which is essentially kind of like, uh, so it's just going to be theta, which is going to be the number of revolutions equals one half times uh, initial angular velocity plus final angular velocity times t. So you can use this formula, uh, but make sure when you plug this in, uh, what you're going to want to do is have this be in, well, the way we're going to do it is we're going to plug this in to be revolutions per minute, right? Because if we write down our given again, uh, we know, let me just write down the given again. So t equals 2.5 seconds. And then we know w or omega or initial angular velocity and final. It's going to be 1200 RPM and 3500 RPM. Right, so all we got to do is just plug it into this formula. So theta, or the number of revolutions, is going to be equal to 1 half times 12, or 3,500 plus 1,200 times, let me actually write the units. So this is RPM plus 1,200 RPM times 2.5 seconds. Right, so we need it to be in revolutions. But notice how we have minutes. This is like revolutions over minutes, right? But what we need to do is make sure this is in seconds because it's going to need to cancel out with this seconds. So we just have revolutions, right? Because this is going to be seconds. So we need it to cancel. So this has to be in seconds. So, or yeah, so this has to be in seconds. So we have to convert this. So let's just rewrite this. So theta equals one half, 3,500 plus 1,200 is going to be 4,700 RPM times 2.5 seconds. So let's go ahead and convert this. So one half times 4,700, but we're going to change this. So 4,700 RPM revolutions per minute. We're going to convert it to uh, seconds. So we know there's one minute for every 60 seconds. So if you just take 4,700, divide it by 60, and plug that in your calculator, you're going to get 78.333 and so on. So this is going to be revolutions per second. And now when you plug it in, right, 78.333 revolutions per second. And then we're multiplying by seconds. Right, so this is seconds. These will cancel now, and you're just going to have revolutions. So go ahead and do this. So do 0.5 times 78.333. Then multiply that by 2.5. And you're going to get 97.917. I'm just going to go ahead and round to 98. So 98, and then this is revolutions. All right, so 98 revolutions. Uh, this right here is your answer to B. So yeah, answer to B is 98 revolutions. Your answer to A was minus 96 uh, radians per second squared. But yeah. Hopefully you found this useful.